the tips having a, gar a garage sale. <laughs> Just having gotten back yesterday, we've been out on the trail a little bit. A lot of signs, you know, and people holding up those placards and all. But there was one that was pretty unusual, Corpus Christi at the airport rally. All that crowd jammed out there and all standing. And I could never see the lady that was doing this. Uh, she just wasn't tall enough out there in the crowd. But every once in a while, those two bear found an arm would raise a sign. And the sign said, all my husband wants for Christmas is to shake the president's hand. <laughs> I grabbed the fellow that was in the scene in the place, and I, he hadn't seen it, and I pointed it out to him. I said, we've got to do something about that. So he stepped up and said, uh, yes, if he will come up here, please. And he did, and I shook his hand. Party of growth and progress, and yes, the party 
that is fighting for greater opportunity for every American. But the leaders of the Democratic Party, people who once fought for lower tax rates under John Kennedy, and who once stood proudly for the cause of freedom in the world alongside FDR, Harry Truman, and I'll even throw in Kennedy and Johnson, those people have abandoned millions of rank and file Democrats and the principles they believed in. And I've said this to some of those rallies where there are numbers of Democrats present and they're the first on their feet cheering when, when they hear that. Today we can all ask these forgotten Americans to come walk with us down the path of hope and opportunity and let the Democratic Party be the party that promises billions to special interests if it seeks tax increases, the equivalent of more than $1,800 per household, more than $150 each and every month. Let them run on a plan to tax and tax and spend and spend, because we can be proud that Republicans are the only ones fighting for growth and growth and more jobs and jobs. We'll debate on the issues because those issues belong to us. The issues of bringing down inflation, interest rates and taxes, building up jobs and opportunity, those are our issues. And we're the ones who want to simplify the tax system to bring everybody's income tax rates further down, not up. Extend the full benefits of IRAs to spouses working in the home. Pass enterprise zone uh, to restore distressed areas and couple enterprise zones with a youth opportunity wage to help teenagers learn skills, escape dependency, and start a new life go forward with initiatives to help public housing residents purchase their dwellings and assume responsibility for home ownership. It's all right for us to help in the providing of the housing in the first place, but why shouldn't we start a program that would get us out of the landlord business and make out of those people that had our help in the first place property owners in their own right? All right. Here. <laughs> We're the ones who want to make America's educational system a great center for leadership, for excellence by raising standards, ensuring discipline, an emphasis on basics, and pushing for merit pay for teachers, and encouraging greater parental involvement. And we're supporting initiatives like tuition tax credits and education savings accounts to help our working families. We're going to push back the frontiers of science and technology. And yes, we're going to say without embarrassment that we seek to honor our traditions, that we believe our fellow citizens are good and decent people whose values deserve to be respected, not patronized. For us, words like faith in God, family, work, and neighborhood are not slogans to be dragged out of the closet every four years. They're values to respect and live by every day. You know, the last time a Republican administration had a Congress of its own persuasion to help it do the things that it told the people it wanted to do was in the first two years of the Eisenhower administration. And through 1980, the Democrats controlled both houses of the Congress. Since 81, we at least have controlled one, the Senate. I guess they're still working at it up there. Something they would to be here with us. We couldn't have accomplished what we had without that one house. But oh, how far we can march if we have both houses of Congress subscribing to our philosophy of more freedom and opportunity for the people. Now we've seen that some Democrats will occasionally vote the right way a few weeks before election day. <laughs> so maybe one of our messages should be vote for our candidates and you'll be represented more than two weeks every two years. <laughs> tell our story, just like in 1980, we can make history. <coughs> the story I'd like to hear that night will be millions of young Americans voting for the first time and millions of rank and file Democrats and independents joining together to give birth to a new party, a great opportunity party, and that will be America's party. So God bless you all as we go forth to battle. I'm told now that we're going to meet with the press so if it sounds like you're hearing something again, uh, over again, don't worry, I wouldn't mind a bit if you applaud anyway. <laughs>
moving out there. Get down there. And President of the United States and the Vice President of the United States. Thank you all. Next year we have to build bigger stairs. Well, I'm glad that our team is all here together today to remember an important commitment that we made to America's future. Four years ago, our country faced the gravest economic crisis since the Great Depression, and many in this town were ready to throw in the towel and count America out. But not the Republican Party, not our team. We said there's nothing wrong with America that our people can't and won't make right if government just will stand aside and get out of the way. So we reached out to the people. We asked them to join with us to rescue our beloved nation, make a new beginning, and help America become strong and successful again. Specifically, we pledged to work for cuts in growth of spending, to reduce waste, fraud, and abuse to a minimum, and dampen the fires of inflation while protecting those in need. For an across-the-board individual income tax cut and increased incentives for saving, investment, and capital recovery to put America back on the road to prosperity, for more private investment and permanent jobs, especially in our inner cities, and for strengthened defenses so America could have a credible foreign policy again and assure peace through strength here at home and greater stability in the world. Well, with the support of the people, all of us have made some important changes. Federal spending growth, which reached a 17% annual rate in 1980, has been cut by nearly two-thirds. Tax rates have been cut for every working American, with new incentives for business to modernize and for entrepreneurs to start up new businesses. Next year, tax brackets will be indexed because we believe government must never again profit from inflation at the people's expense. Unlike four years ago, today we're building a defensive strength and today we're giving those brave young men and women who put their lives on the line for us the moral support, the weapons, and the equipment they need to get the job done. We've also worked hard to strengthen the good and decent values of faith, family, work, neighborhood, and freedom. Those values have never failed America when we've lived up to them. We've made a new beginning, and America today is a very different place than four years ago. It wasn't a coincidence in 1980 that the problems of inflation, interest rates, taxes, jobs, crime, and morale in the military were all getting worse and our future looked bleak. And believe me, it's not a coincidence today that every one of those problems is being turned around and our future looks bright again. Army is as powerful as an idea whose time has come. In 1980, we said it's time to give this government back to the people. When Washington was calling the plays, all we did was fumble. Today, the people are back in charge and we're scoring touchdowns again. Now, the other side kept said it couldn't be done. But inflation, taxes, and interest rates are down. Jobs, investment, and growth are all up. The morale of our enlisted men and women is up. And their readiness and ability to protect freedom and preserve peace are better than ever before. Since 1980, not one square inch of territory has been lost to communist aggression. Today, we're telling the people the Republican Party will not rest until every American who wants a job can find a job, from Brownsville to Buffalo to San Francisco Bay. And that's why the... And 
And that's why the choice in 84 is so clear. There comes a time when we must firmly choose the course we'll follow. On November 6th, the American people must decide whether we will go forward with the courage, the common sense, and new spirit that are making America strong again, giving us new opportunities, and offering the best hope for all, or will we turn back to the policies of high taxing and spending that weakened our economy, reduced opportunities, and brought hardship to so many? I believe young Americans, independents, and rank-and-file Democrats are making that choice. They're joining our team in larger and larger numbers because they can see that we offer the surest vehicle to progress, the one movement that's saying to every man and woman, without exception, America can only be great when each of you can reach for greatness, when you can reach for the stars and climb up to the ultimate in individual freedom to achieve your full God-given potential. So we're urging all Americans, come walk with us down this new path of hope and opportunity. Add your strength to ours, and together we'll become the most powerful force for progress that America has ever known. Well, all of us together can build on the progress we've made. We can lower everybody's tax rates further and create more jobs, rising take-home pay, and greater opportunities for all. We can extend the full benefits of IRAs to spouses working in the home, pass enterprise zones to restore distressed areas, and give hope to those who are left out. Could enterprise zones couple those with a youth opportunity wage to help teenagers learn skills and escape dependency, start a new life, and go forward with initiatives to help public housing residents purchase their dwellings and assume responsibility for home ownership. We can push forward new frontiers in science, space, and technology, and we can strengthen the great grassroots movement we've helped lead to make America's educational system a great center of leadership for excellence. Everything we've done, everything that we mean to do, is to give every American the opportunity to make this great free nation greater and freer still. Our opponents' policies would take us off the new path of an opportunity society, put us back in the old path of defeatism, decline, and despair. They propose a tax increase, equivalent to more than $1,800 per household. That's more than $150 each and every month of the year. It's a ball and chain around the neck of America's families and America's future. Their idea of compassion is bureaucratic compassion which always begins with every family sending more to Washington and ultimately leads to more suffering for those who need help the most. We're building a new party, a grassroots opportunity party that seeks genuine compassion through new opportunities, new ideas, and new solutions that will mean a better life for all. Come November 6th, Americans will choose between two different teams. They can vote for the tax increase team that kicked off its campaign with a plan to take the equivalent of more than $150 a month, as I've said, from each household, a plan that will destroy growth, jobs, and bring back inflation, or they can vote for the team that wants to lower personal income tax rates, give every family more hope so all of us can go forward together to build a better future for America. We don't want to see the American people dragged back to that unhappy past. We're asking them to stick with us, and we're going to tell the world you ain't seen nothing yet. Thank you all. Thank you all, and God bless you all, and now, go get them. We'll see you out on the trail.
Vale. Sam, normally I wouldn't take a question, but that is a challenge, not a question. Uh, this has been typical of what has happened ever since we've been here. And you can lay this right on the majority party in the House of Representatives. <laughs> just once, just once, it would be great to have a budget on time. Here, here, here. What'd you say, Andrea? What am I doing to, to, re to prepare for the debate? Uh, just reminding myself of all that we've done.